Howard in Perth, Australia. I've been to Perth, great little city. Actually, not that small. <laughs> you know, Australia is kind of like Texas. Everything that is there is big. Hey, Paul, I understand how and why an amplifier clipping can damage speakers, tweeters in particular. What I would like to know is when music is recorded with heavy distortion, clipping, uh, i.e. clipping, will this result in the same damage? Wow, great question. It's a tough one to answer because, yes, let, 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 me, let me put this into a different light and explain first why clipping can damage a tweeter. So tweeters don't handle that much output, that many watts, and, and they don't need to because, you know, 10 watts into this thing, th this produces a lot of sound. And if you look at the spectral scope of music, it's very many watts that are down here in the low frequencies. And as the frequencies get higher and higher, the need for power goes down and down. And that's why tweeters in our speakers and any other speaker really don't need to handle that much. So they're not designed to handle hundreds of watts, right? So the problem comes in when we clip an amplifier. Why is that? Because if you imagine a sine wave going out, nice clean sine wave going up and down, when it clips, the top of that sine wave gets squared off, okay? And just think of a square wave. And that is going to, uh, square waves are made up of all these odd harmonics, all these ultra high frequencies that didn't exist in the music. So as soon as you clip the sine wave, you're creating all this high frequency energy. And because clipping happens at the maximum output of an amplifier or beyond the maximum output, now what do you have? You have high frequencies with a lot of energy being fed right into your tweeter. And that can often damage a tweeter. So the question is, do you have to have amplifier clipping in order to damage a speaker? So if I were to now say, okay, now let's take a square wave generator and put it into our amplifier. Now we're making square waves. Well, much depends on the amplitude of the square wave, just as it would depend on the amplitude of the music. So if I had recorded something to where it was distorted, hopefully at Octave Records, we don't do that, <laughs> but if I had, and if that distortion was not at a very high level, I just, as I recorded it, the doggone thing clipped and created all this high frequency energy. Well, if it wasn't playing very loud, no, definitely would not damage the speaker. If it's playing near the, out, you know, the high output, yeah, it would damage the speaker. Anything that is producing high wattage at high frequencies can damage a tweeter for whatever reason. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. It's very doubtful that you would ever have to worry about a modern or even an older recording having so much distortion at such high levels that it would actually produce square waves and depends on the medium. You know, uh, turntables can't produce square waves very well, not high frequency ones. So you're, you're probably okay, and I don't think I would worry about it. But technically, yes, it could. Hopefully, that makes sense. All right. Thanks for the question. <laughs> Bye.